Good day. My name is Sharice Eka Cooper from the Endangered Wildlife Trust Threatened Amphibian Program, in which we work towards the protection of threatened amphibians and their habitats, securing important freshwater resources and related ecosystem services. Amphibians are the most threatened vertebrates on Earth, with 41% of species assessed by the IUCN Red List as being at risk of extinction. And in South Africa, almost 30% of our 135 frog species are considered threatened. Understanding threats that face frogs and how they adapt to changes in the environment form part of the process of conserving them. As such, we initiated an innovative approach to observing the behavior of amphibians using camera traps. This project is supported by a team which include Dr. Jean Terrence and Dr. Lizanne Roxborough. Behaviour studies can expand knowledge on habitat requirements, reproductive behaviour and dispersal or migration patterns. Amphibians are considered as bioindicators for assessing the condition of habitat. Using these as indicators of change are a valuable tool in developing conservation management actions. Monitoring amphibian population dynamics and behaviour can provide valuable insights into animal responses to stresses such as habitat condition, modification, fragmentation, anthropogenic impacts and climate change. Additionally, using amphibian behaviour in relation to responses to a conservation management action will aid in measuring the success of that action. As far as we are aware, there are no other projects in South Africa and possibly Africa that make use of camera surveillance to observe amphibian behaviour. As such, this project aims to determine effectiveness of using camera traps in observing the behaviour of threatened species, which will culminate in the development of relevant study protocols. Behaviour studies are conducted in relation to amphibian responses to habitat impacts, and results of these will inform conservation management activities. To guide this process, selection criteria prioritise threatened species that demonstrate habitual behaviour. Although the study targets several species throughout South Africa, this presentation specifically reports on the data collected from behaviour studies conducted targeting the endangered clue frog. One of the reasons for selecting the species is that it demonstrates habitual behaviour which has been observed through continuous monitoring. Monitoring started in 2016 in collaboration with Isambelo KZN Wildlife's Honorary Officers Mike and Leslie Bentley, where a 200 metre transect has been used to collect data on the clue frog found in Vernon Crooks Nature Reserve. To start this project, we use a spy point four star camera trap which was set on black light to avoid negative impact on natural behaviour. This camera trap has three settings. The first two, picture and video, Use movement to activate the camera and the last setting, time lapse, is when the camera is set to take an image at specific time intervals. Initially, the picture and video setting were used, but the motion detector was not strong enough to pick up the movement of the clue frog. Finally, time lapse was used, which was set to take a picture every minute. The camera trap was placed at a specific site and memory cards were collected every two weeks and the batteries were replaced when necessary. Photos taken on time lapse were processed into a video format and analysed according to species and location, female or male activity, start and end time, male or female behaviour activity description and when these started and ended, temperature relevant for activity and behaviour, observable responses to environmental change or, or conservation management activity, and data collection started in December 2020. Here is an example of an image captured by the camera trap. In this image, you can see the study site and a female is present on the eggs. The camera trap image captures the date, time, temperature and moon phase, which is captured in an Excel spreadsheet together with the activity data. Data is not captured image by image, rather all pictures are processed into a video file per day and data is processed from this video format. Using videos, an activity profile was developed. This image shows the green and blue dots representing different males and pink circles highlighting the female activity sites and egg clump placements. From this image, you can, see, you can see that there are very clear activity hotspots on the rock and surrounding areas, and the male and female individuals were numbered according to these hotspots or zones in which they, were, they frequented. Male and female 
activity data collected between January and June 2021 show that the females, represented by the pink bar, are not active in June, while males, represented by the green bar, are active throughout this time. It was observed that females are only present when there are egg clumps, and in January to April there were three egg clumps each month, while in May there were only two egg clumps, and in June no egg clumps were present. During observations, it was noted that activity was much more frequent when there was rain, but rainfall for the reserve did not seem to correlate to the annual readings taken from the neighbouring farm. As such, rainfall taken from 2014 and 2020 was used and it was represented by the blue bar. With this, it seems that if there is rain, the females do not seem to spend as much time with the egg clumps, but if rainfall is low, female seem to visit clumps more regularly. In addition, it was observed that between January and May, males were active throughout the area, especially on the rock. But in June, males almost exclusively stayed in the surrounding sand and leaf litter. This may be attributed to the difference in temperature between the rock and the leaf litter due to the cold winter temperatures. It was observed that the reproduction process has five stages. Firstly, the male and the female conduct a site inspection, visiting specific sites where clumps may be planned to be laid. They visit the site a number of times before mating, as if preparing the site. The male and the female then mate, and while in amplexus, they re release a liquid. Perhaps this liquid acts as an adhesive to ensure that the egg clump is secure to the surface. Both male and female leave the site and the female returns later to lay her eggs. Once laid, the female will return on a regular basis. Louis Dupre reported that when he observed females returning to the eggs, they released a liquid which is thought to keep the eggs moist and prevents them from drying out. We observed that when the female arrives, you can distinctly note that her abdomen is enlarged, but when she leaves the eggs, she returns to her normal size after she's released this liquid. We also note that the females use their back legs to guide them up and down the margin of the egg clumps. There are a number of other observations. Some of these include the fact that there are definite mating pairs. Males also seem to check on the eggs. Females sometimes get it wrong and do on very rare occasions go to the wrong egg clump and then they return to their egg clump once they realize that they got it wrong. One female has also been observed returning to an egg clump which is no longer there on three occasions attempting to water the eggs. And we've been able to capture some data on the common ribbon frog. The next slide will show you a short video clip on the mating behaviour of the frogs. The endangered clue frog is found along rocky streams in the coastal forests of KZN in the Eastern Cape. In 2020, the Endangered Wildlife Trust's Threatened Amphibian Program set camera traps in Vernon Crooks Nature Reserve to monitor the egg clumps and to learn more about their behaviour. In this short video, you can see a female on the left and the smaller male on the right. We have learned that the males and the females visit the site several times before they mate or lay their eggs. There is a second female with an existing egg clump on the right, and this female returns regularly to care for the eggs until they all hatch. The next evening, the male and the female eventually mate, and they cover some distance before they return to the expected egg-laying site. While in amplexus on the site, a liquid is released, after which they leave the site once again. This liquid perhaps marks the site and prepares it for the egg clump to attach. Finally, the female lays her eggs. We believe that there are definite mating pairs. The male here is paired with the female on the right and will spend a considerable amount of time with the eggs until they are all hatched. The male who is paired with the female on the left finally returns. Both females return regularly to release water over the eggs, which we think is a strategy to keep the eggs moist and prevent them from drying out. Thank you to all our sponsors and partners for supporting this work. There were a few challenges with the camera trap um, project. Firstly, the trials between the different settings with the camera trap caused a few delays. We also had extensive periods when data is not captured because we had a few problems with the memory card model. We also realized that the um, camera trap cannot use rechargeables and the length of battery life depends on the make. And then sometimes the, the camera trap will switch off and then we lose data until I'm able to go back there again and replace the batteries or the memory card. 
In conclusion, this first of its kind project has been uh, so exciting and we've been able to gain such valuable insights into the, the behavior of the clue frog. We do need more data to verify certain behaviors and this will result in continuous monitoring. I've recently acquired another camera trap and I'll be setting it at a different site where the clue frog occurs and then we'll be able to compare different sites and the different conditions in, within these different sites. We need to formalize data capture approaches and analysis and then I'd like to apply these to different species like the common river frog. Firstly, I'd like to thank KZN Wildlife for their support of the project and our activities within Vernon Crooks Nature Reserve. And I'd like to give a special thank you to Mike and Leslie Bentley for their tireless work um, in their monitoring of the clue frog um, since 2016. And a big thank you to Synchronicity Earth and Whitley Fund for Nature for their financial support of the project. Thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and I look forward to giving more feedback in the years to come.